Hey guys, good morning. I'm Dory, welcome to, back to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to be doing my weekly meal prep um, today. Today is Sunday, I'm in my jammies. And uh, it's a great day. Uh, I just got out of the shower, my hair's a little mess. Uh, but welcome to it. Um, I'm going to be doing a, um, like a Philly steak and cheese bowl, uh, sans the sandwich, obviously. And then I'm also going to be making a keto lasagna, low carb lasagna, whatever you really want to call it, but I'm making it with cut the carb. Um, and I'm going to be using a couple of new ingredients that I haven't tried before, but I'm really excited to see how it comes out. Um, and then I'll do a couple of extra things and uh, we'll go from there. Enjoy. Okay guys, so here's what I'm going to start out with for my Philly steak and cheese. Um, this is the Philly steak I use. It's just from um, Walmart. And here are the stats. I'm sure they're backwards, so I'll read them. But one piece is uh, 210 calories, 15 fat, uh, no carbs, no fiber, no sugar, and 20 grams of protein. And there's four um, servings in here. Obviously, I don't even eat one serving because it'll be mixed with veggies. I'm also adding in eight ounces of Philadelphia cream cheese. Um, I pre-cut my, um, my peppers and I'm just doing red peppers and um, onions. I tried to do this new method to kind of save time and I cut them and froze them and then I just pulled them out. I don't think I'm gonna like this method because they come out watery. That was what I was afraid of. I had asked a bunch of people um, online, other people who make, uh, use veggies a lot and they freeze them, they say, throw them in a pan and they're great. I do not like how um, watery they come out. So I'm gonna still fry them up and hope for the best. Um, and then to top it, I have provolone cheese, same thing. Um, it has one slice is 70 calories, five fat, no carbs, no fiber, no sugar, no added sugars, and five protein. And I'm going to use all of them in here, which is 12. Um, so I will, as always, make up a recipe in my fitness pal and tell you guys what the stats are. So I turn this on. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of the olive oil on the bottom. Very, very little amount. Maybe a tablespoon if, or a half of a tablespoon, maybe. Um, I'm going to take these veggies out of here. And normally I would just dump them from my cutting board into here, but these are lots and lots of water. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to actually, let me just grab a, uh, a strainer. I'm going to actually strain these in my strainer because there is a lot of water. Yeah, this is why I won't, uh, I won't freeze these again. I know many of you do freeze them, but that's not gonna be my method. Um, so here's all of my veggies I will throw into my plate here, or my um, frying pan. Oh yeah, there's a ton of water. I never re realized how much water really comes out of these, I guess. And they only sat in the freezer, honestly, for about 24 hours because I just um, had done these. And I was going to make this meal prep yesterday. So it basically was only um, in the freezer for like 24 hours. And there is so much water. So anyways, enough about that. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to saute this get it nice and brown, um, get it not really crispy, but not really um, flimsy either. And I'll be back when I'm about to add my rest of it, my ingredients. Guys, I just wanted to come back and just show you, this is how these come out of the package. There's four of them. But what I do is I open the package and then I cut them up onto a cutting board and then we'll add them later. It's hard sometimes I find if I put them in the pan, um, and just kind of try to kind of mash it up. It's just easier this way. I find that it goes farther. It mixes with the veggies uh, better. So I'm just going to go ahead and just cut all this meat up into smaller pieces. And then it'll be ready to go in. I do like the way that these come uh, in these blocks versus um, in a uh, another container that 
uh, may have them, like kind of like the Steakums. Steakums usually come like, they're all mismatched and mushed all together. I really do like it this way. It's just so much easier to cut. It just reminds me of like cutting veggies up or whatever. So I'm just gonna go ahead, continue to cut this. Uh, it is semi-frozen and that's why it probably looks like it's more difficult to cut than if it was not. Um, but it'll be fine by the time the veggies are crisping up and by the time we add it, just cutting it apart like this will help with the um, process of making sure that it's back to room temperature. And I'll be back. Okay, so I have the veggies cooking in here. I actually added a poblano pepper to this uh, just to get a little bit more green and color in here since I just had the red and then the purple onion. Um, so this is coming along nicely and I'm actually going to be using Fresh Jack's uh, seasonings. This one I'm gonna put in, it's Keto Chop House. I'm using also garlic herb and then I'm using toasted onion. And so these are the three that I really love with this recipe. And it's probably gonna be like, uh, maybe a tablespoon of each. And uh, I really enjoy these flavors together. They're absolutely delicious. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in here. I'm almost ready to uh, add in my meat. Let me show you what this looks like. And I will show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is how the veggies are coming together. Um, they're almost cooked. I did want to mention, I don't use a lot of peppers in, um, in my recipes. And I try to stay away from a couple of veggies. And the reason being is there are some veggies that are called nightshades. And they actually are... Uh, they're not anti-inflammatory, they're inflammatory to our body. And so if you struggle with uh, veggies that, or sorry, if you struggle with inflammation at any point um, and you want to kind of get down the bloating and inflammation, uh, I would stay away from peppers, mushrooms, eggplant, um, and I believe there's one more, but the mushrooms are a huge uh, no-no and then pepper. So I limit my peppers, my mushrooms, I limit uh, eggplant I never eat. Um, and I feel like there's one more, I forgot what it is, but look up nightshades and anti-inflammation. And if you need any more um, like reasons why uh, as we're aging is uh, look up Tom Brady, the quarterback that was for the New England Patriots. Now he's on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He is going to his 10th Super Bowl. He is 43 years old. No one ever thought he'd be able to do it, but his diet is phenomenal. Um, so look up his diet, and these are the things he stays away from, and his body is like at peak performance. So here is the meat, and let me just get and threw some over the side. <laughs> That's what I get using my non-dominant left hand. Let's see. All right. So this is what it looks like. It's going to cook down a little bit and just look, oh, it's gonna be delicious. So the next thing up as I'm getting this ready is once the meat is cooked, um, I'm gonna add in the eight ounces of cream cheese. And then once that melts, and the reason I put that in with this is just so as we're using it during the week and we're reheating, um, this will always be creamy. Uh, then when you top it with a provolone and stick it in the oven for um, the melting purposes and getting it a little brown, um, it just, it, it tastes phenomenal, you guys. And with these seasonings that I put in, I mean, if we had smell-o-vision, <laughs> then you guys would be like so stoked. It is delicious. It smells phenomenal, and I am looking forward to having this. I'll be back when it's fully cooked and I add in the next one. Okay, so this is just about done. I've preheated the oven to 450 degrees and that is just going to be for the cheese, the provolone cheese to uh, brown on top. So 
I just added all of the cream cheese. That's a whole block, the eight ounces. I cut it into cubes just to help it to be able to incorporate better and not just be this big blob. Um, and this is so good. So I'm gonna let that just incorporate, then I'm going to put it into my pan and I will um, show you guys when I come back what it looks like in the pan and then I'm gonna go ahead and top it with provolone cheese and bacon. So when I saw how little an amount this is, I'm gonna change it to this type of a um, baking dish. So it did come out great, but I know that this would be overkill. It would be too thin on the bottom. So I'm just gonna put it into here. It really doesn't matter like what shape it's gonna bake in because it's gonna be taken out of here anyways and put into my um, snapware containers. And I'll go ahead and take the provolone cheese. One, two, three, four, five. So I can actually take some of the provolone cheese out of the recipe that I just created because I only used five slices. One, two, three, four, yep, five slices, and that'll be enough, which is actually great considering I'm the only one that's gonna eat this and I know it won't go to waste. Okay guys, so um, while the, I'm waiting for the oven for my uh, Philly steak and cheese that's right here, I'm gonna move on to my next recipe. This is something that I'm just creating off the cuff. I have done variations of this, but I haven't done it for a while. I have uh, cut the carb. This is a low carb wrap. I'm gonna use it to uh, make a lasagna. Now, normally I would use ground beef, ground turkey, uh, chicken sometimes. This time I have a lot of Amy Lou, A-M-Y-L-U is the company, and I have a lot of these chicken sausages. So I am going to cut up 10 of them just in small uh, slices, and I'm gonna use that throughout it. I'm also going to be using the Rayo's pizza sauce. I have a little jar of this. I'm going to be using Parmesan cheese. I'm going to be using the Philadelphia cream cheese uh, throughout the layers, and that is going to be sort of like the ricotta cheese you would normally make uh, a, um, a homemade lasagna with. Because I had the leftover provolone, I'm gonna stick that in there, and then I'm going to use mozzarella cheese throughout. Because I'm the only one that's going to be eating this, um, the mozzarella cheese is fine for me. If my husband was home and he was eating it, I would have to sub out some of the mozzarella cheese because it actually hurts his tummy if he eats too much of it. And so I will show you guys as I'm layering it how it's coming out. Okay, so I took this pan and I put a little bit of the Rayo's pizza sauce down the bottom and one cut the carb. These are perfect for a 13 by nine pan. And then I went ahead and the uh, Philadelphia cream cheese is being used just like we would do a traditional um, uh, lasagna with the ricotta cheese. So I went ahead and I spread that out. Next, I had cut up these chicken sausages and so I'm basically just going to toss these throughout each layer. Um, I did 10 sausages, and then this whole plate of mozzarella cheese will is 10 ounces, and that is going to go through the whole entire um, lasagna. So I used a little bit of that, and then now I'm going to just be putting a tiny bit of the Rayo's pizza sauce on each layer as well. So it's kind of like a traditional um, Italian lasagna with the, you know, spices. Then I'm also going to go in with, um, let me find it. I'm going to use some of this Italian seasoning and let's just get all the way through that each layer. And then I'm also going to use the toasted onion that is from Fresh Jacks and the garlic herb Fresh Jacks on each layer. So that's one layer. Then we're going to cover it again with another cut the carb. And then next, we're going to be putting on the Philadelphia cream cheese on each piece. This actually is a really, really good um, thing to use if you don't have cottage cheese, ricotta cheese, things like that that a recipe would normally call for. 
and uh, oh, my oven is ready for my first meal to go into brown. And I'll show you guys what it looks like when it comes out. Remember that it's all fully cooked. So um, it's really just in there to brown um, for the purpose of um, uh, the cheese, just getting nice and a little bit of crispy on the top. So again, we just go in with some of that. We go in with a little bit of the Parmesan on this layer as well. Then we're gonna use a little bit of the Rayos. I'm only going to go a few more, maybe another layer, and then we'll be done. So let's put this layer on top of here. And I always push it down just because everything is, you know, especially these uh, sausages here. Um, and so I'm going to just basically put this here. You may hear some banging in the background. My little dog is running around after my cat. And uh, so you'll probably hear some of the little pitter patter on the floor. Um, let's see, let's put some more of this chicken sausage. This stuff is really good, you guys. The stats on this is amazing. I've been eating on it um, all last week. This is my second big package that I opened and I've been having it with the cheese sauce I'm gonna make um, next to show you guys that, um, but I love this. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go in with some more of the cheese. This will be my last layer um, that I'm going to be doing as far as, uh, you know, adding some more stuff on top. So I'm just going to do this last one right here and I'm just using up whatever the last ingredients I have in here. This will all get melted and blended together. Just make sure I get all this delicious cream cheese in there. I'm gonna go ahead with the seasonings. I'm going to make sure that I add the rest of the things on here. A little bit, the rest of the sausage. And then I'm going to use the rest of the pizza sauce, just a little bit. This is actually like, I mean, you could really use whatever. I've used just canned tomatoes, crushed tomatoes. I've used pizza sauce. I've used um, the spaghetti sauce. I've used all different, different things. And then I'm gonna go ahead and top this with the provolone cheese that we hadn't used um, in our first dish that we made and this actually works out perfect um, just to kind of put on top I'll take one slice and just lay it on top and then this is basically what it looks like from the top and then I will bake this in a second and again all those ingredients are fully cooked uh, the the um, the um, sausage the chicken sausage fully cooked so I'm gonna actually just throw this in with the other one. And then I will be back and show you guys how they look. Okay guys, so I'm gonna make the cheese that Nicole Burgess makes. And I did uh, show you this uh, maybe once or twice before, but I take one block of the sharp white cheddar, one, uh, it's 16 ounces. I cut that into little blocks and throw it into a pan on low. This is going to incorporate in, and to this, I add eight ounces of cream cheese, one can of diced chilies, and a little bit more than a quarter cup of the unsweetened almond milk. This is going to come out phenomenal, and I'll be back to show you the product at okay, the end. Okay, guys, so this is the Philly steak and cheese, nice and bubbly, and then this is the cut the carb uh, lasagna. I love that it gets a little crispy on the edges. It's not, you know, too pleasing to look at all the <laughs> bumps all over, but this is gonna be delicious. And then I also have the cheese um, coming together over here. It's, you know, takes a little while. Gotta cook it on low, low and slow. I'm ready with my um, chilies, green diced chilies. 
And then I also have my little bit more than a quarter of a cup of the unsweetened almond milk. That's gonna go in here and then this will be done. I'm going to come back and cook my last meal prep, which is going to be baked chicken. And this is one of my kids' favorite things to eat. So I'll be back and I'll show you how that Here's is Here's the cheese sauce. It's all melted and I'm just going to put in the can of diced chilies and I have um, drained them. So basically this is what it looks like. It's all beautiful liquid cheese. I'm going to be uh, just leaving this on. I put it on the melt feature and basically I'm just going to leave it here and then I'm going to move on to my other um, my other uh, prep, which is the chicken, and I'm gonna have my son Ethan help me. I'll be right Okay, back. so this is my son Ethan. He's nine. Say hi, Ethan. Hi. <laughs> so if you can pour a tiny bit of this, this is olive oil, organic olive oil, in this pan. Just like sprinkle it a little bit. A little bit more. Perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make baked chicken. These are chicken thighs. I like them very uh, much because they are not um, dry like chicken breast. So I just take the, the chicken and I put it into the pan. But first what I do is all the oil that was on the bottom, I just get it onto the top of the skin because this helps with the crisping of it. So I'm just gonna kind of put it away, around. And this is why I have gloves on and why Ethan is not gonna touch the chicken is because he does not have gloves on. And we all know about salmonella poisoning or salmonella poisoning. So I'm gonna put those over there, make sure that we keep clean. So to this, we are gonna add some of these seasonings. We're gonna be using paprika, Redmond's Real Salt, garlic herb from Fresh Jacks, and the toasted onion. My kids and I love this chicken because it comes out really, really juicy and it also has a nice crispy skin, which they really like. So Ethan, you're gonna pour this, use both hands, use that hand too. I know you're a lefty, so however you wanna hold it, but basically you're just gonna squeeze it or shake it all on top of the chicken. And it's gonna be this way. Let's, let's do it this way, because the, okay, go ahead. Yep, keep going. We'll use a lot of paprika. This is actually what gives it a good color. Yep, you can do that. Yeah, okay, that's good. Okay, good job, Ethan. Now I'm just gonna take this, um, turn it over, make sure that we have this all on all of it. All right. Next, we're going to be using a little bit of the toasted onion. This got a little bit of oil on it. So, Ethan, you're going to go like this. Watch mommy. You're going to shake it back and forth like this. So let me do the onion. Now you can do this one. But you're just going to shake it back and forth just like mommy did. There you go. Perfect. And then last, we're going to put a little bit of Redmond's Real Salt. And you're going to do the same thing. It's, it's enough opened. Yep. There we go. A little bit right there. Perfect. So... This is actually going to go in. I'm going to add a tiny bit. Ethan's going to add a tiny bit of oil. A little bit more we'll do together, bud. Just to make sure that it doesn't get too dry on the bottom or stick. And so this is going to go in. I did take the temperature down from earlier. It was 450 degrees so I could uh, do the tops of the cheese. And I did lower it down to 350 degrees. And it's, of course ready for this delicious chicken to go in. So Ethan, you wanna open that for mommy? All the way down, keep going. Perfect. And we're gonna put that in, go ahead, shut it for me. All right, and so now Ethan and I will be back to show you what our chicken looks like in about, I'd say an hour. Thanks buddy. So guys, this is how the cheese sauce looks, the final product. It is so good. So per serving, which I think I have it as a cup. No, maybe maybe a half a cup. I think it's a half a cup. Um, but basically, I have like maybe 10 to 15 servings out of this. Possibly even more. But if it's 10 servings for this whole thing, it is only 
1.8 carbs and that comes of course from the chilies and it is like 200 and I think it's 200 calories just so good oh my gosh so good and look how satisfying this is even just to flip it around oh guys this stuff is so good um, but anyways that is the cheese right, everybody this is how the chicken came out the skin is crispy it is cooked all the way through very very delicious i'm actually going to turn it over and just let it sit in the juice for a moment you could see it's so good delicious this is what the kiddos and i will have for dinner tonight um, we are actually going to do our church service on zoom and we'll have this tonight thanks for joining me Please like and subscribe if you like these type of videos.